and peace be unto you, my dearly beloved. This is IMEF TV. Today is Wednesday. This is an hour we call in God's presence. Beloved, because of the Lord's grace and love, we are not consumed. We are still alive. There's breath and life in us. So we got to be thankful to God for all that God has done for us. Today I want to share a word with you titled God's Love. God's Love. But before, I want to prepare your heart by singing a nice and a wonderful song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is the faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is the faithfulness. Great is the faith. Thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Almighty, thank you for this special day. I thank you for the life of my viewers. I pray that as your word is about to come, I pray that you open the hearts of your people. Lord Jesus, touch the ears of your people so that this word will come to them and change them, give them hope, and also help them to experience you in a very special way. Lord, use me also as a vessel to talk to your people today. I honor you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, today the topic of my discussion is God's love. God's love. We are reading a quotation from Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5. Verse 8, I read, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Dear viewers, watching and listening to me from all over the world, I thank you for sparing me some few minutes of your time to listen to the word of God. It is my prayer that at the end of this presentation, you will be blessed beyond measure. I ask the Holy Spirit to grant you the supernatural strength to abide in God and his word. Beloved, the Bible mentions that by the transgression of Adam and Eve, his wife, we all became sinners. In other words, through Adam and Eve, you and myself became sinners. But God loved us and so sent his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, to die on a shameful cross to atone for our numerous sins so as to pave the way for us to be able to approach God without shame or sense of guilt. I am aware that theologically you may argue that you have no sin because it was Adam and his wife, Eve, who sinned. 
So what is this young man telling me? Ha ha ha. I think you 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 have scored you will score a point there. But let us not forget that our ways are not that of God. And the knowledge of God and the word of God supersedes ours. Okay, let me put my question in this way. Let's assume that you do not accept that by the sins of Adam and his wife, you have sinned. Or let's assume that you do not accept the sins of Adam and his wife as yours. But what about if I should ask you or put the question in this way? Do you love others or do you try to show love to others? Are you kind to others? Do you rejoice when things are good with people and they are rejoicing? Do you rejoice with them? Or you are so envious that when people are rejoicing, you feel or you, 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 you pray that bad things should happen to them? Do you rejoice with others when they are happy? Do you backbite or try to make others look as if they are nothing before people? How pure is our heart towards others? I want you to ponder over all these questions that I've asked. Just ponder. Just think about it. Reflect on them. Do you love others? My viewer, if you will genuinely answer these questions, you will find out that we are indeed sinners. We are sinners because we are not able to love others as God wants us to love others. But notwithstanding, Christ died for us. So therefore, my dear friend, if God allowed his son, Christ, to die for us, even in our sins, then God loves the sinner. Jesus, in his own words, said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This we can find from Luke chapter 5, 32. Take note, beloved. That is because of our countless sins that Christ came. It is because of our countless sins that Christ came. Siblings in Christ, I admonish you not to kill yourself because of your past sins. Never think of doing something wrong or never think of harming yourself because you feel your sins are so great, because you feel your sins are so enormous, and that God cannot forgive you. Isaiah chapter 118 tells us to come to God just as we are. Please kindly turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Um, and let's read together. The Bible says, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Hallelujah. 
precious one, as filthy as we feel we are, God still invites us to come to him so that our matter with him will be settled. Oh, what a lovely God. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, oh, what a lovely God. If God did not condemn you, beloved, why do you condemn yourself? Maybe you did not hear me well. What I said was, if God did not condemn you for your sins, why then do you condemn yourself? My dear siblings, my dear friend, God is calling you to come out from your bondage. Why do you keep on waiting and suffering? Come to God just as you are. Come to Jesus. His hands are wide open to receive you. Come to Jesus. He will give you the strength to do away with everything that brings gap between you and God. In John chapter 8, my dear friends, the word of God gives us an account of a woman who was brought into the temple by the teachers of the law. Her charge was that she had committed adultery and the mob planned to stone her to death. But Jesus came to the scene to rescue her. Dear one, Jesus has come to rescue you also from the condemnation of your sin and that of man. Jesus tells us in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 10, that there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. In other words, God does not reject or rejoice in the death of the unrepentant person. Think about this. Think about this. I said, God does not rejoice in the death of the unrepentant person. God came for the sinner, but not because of the righteous. I don't know what you are going through in life. I don't know your, the, the kind of past sins that makes you feel that you have no God or God has abandoned you or you have, you, you have no chance. You have no second chance. The Bible says that God does not rejoice in the death of the unrepentant person. Maybe you are planning to end your life because of the problems you are facing in life. Maybe you are thinking of ending your life because of something you did in the past which has been haunting you and that is making you feel there is no God or God will never forgive you. Maybe you did something in the past and it is fighting against your presence and you feel God has left you. My dear, I want you to know that God has not left you. God loves you. I encourage you to go back to God today. I tell you, God will receive you because the steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never comes to an end. Draw near to God and God will dear, draw near to you, my dear one. What is it that is eating you up? 
What is it that is giving you sleepless night? God's love is so everlasting. God's love is so ever, 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 everlasting. Beloved, don't kill yourself. For God is with you. God's love. God came that I and you, as sinners as we are, as filthy as we feel we are, God came that we might have life and have it in abundance. Remember, he said, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are thinking. Maybe you are even thinking of causing or committing a suicide. You are thinking of ending your life because you feel you have no one, you have nobody. You feel nobody feels your pain. You feel that everybody has rejected you. But I want to assure you that even if anybody, if everybody will reject you, God will not, God will never, I repeat, God will never reject you because his love is everlasting. I want to encourage you. I encourage you. As filthy as you feel you are, come to God. God will take you back. God will change your old ways. And a good relationship will be established between you and God. And you continue to enjoy the blessings and the peace that God gives to his people. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. That has been preached. I pray that you draw all people to yourself so that people experience your love. I pray that you will continue to give hope to the hopeless. I pray that Lord Jesus, you will touch people to have a personal experience with you, to have a personal encounter with you. I pray that Lord Jesus, as we move to and fro, as we feel within ourselves that there is no hope, as we feel that all things have come to an end, we pray that Lord Jesus, you will be with us. You will speak to our hearts. Father, you visit us. You speak to us and give us hope. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you make your people know that they are also part of your kingdom. That they also feel that though they feel they are so filthy, they are, they are so shameful, they feel they are, though they feel they are, they, they, they are ashamed to come to you. But Lord, I pray that you make them understand that even in their shamefulness, in their filthiness, in their guiltiness, you love them. I pray, Lord, that you draw people to yourself. I thank you for an answered prayer. I pray this through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our High Priest, who will come again and judge the living and the dead. In the mighty name of Jesus that I've prayed. Amen. So, beloved, my name is Evans Ban Minta. I am the president of IMIF TV. Please like our Facebook and YouTube pages. Share our videos. Comment and like us. Let us also know what you think and what you feel we can do better. We thank you for your time. And so may the Lord bless us all. May the Lord keep us. And the Lord make his face shine 
unto all of us that the peace of the Lord will be with us now and forevermore. Amen.